Well, this is novel. I thought I would uh, uh, give Living Off Grid a try. Well, not so much Living Off Grid as One Night Off Grid. Um, in fact, less than 24 hours off grid, but it's a start. Uh, and I'm in the middle of the, uh, the Welsh countryside at a secret destination where I, I've been living, um, well, staying one night in a shepherd hut with just cold water, although it does have a kettle, uh, and a, a wood burning stove, and it's very, very comfy. And my only neighbours are uh, a brood of eight chickens uh, and one mum who've been uh, getting to know me this morning as I've had my uh, cooked breakfast. They're, they're a little bit worried because they could see it was bacon and sausage and egg. So uh, whilst the, the hens are involved in that, uh, the pigs rather committed it's coming on to uh, drizzle now. I have been uh, mostly, <laughs> this is a bit of a giveaway, I've been mostly working. There is Wi-Fi here as well, so whilst I might be off-grid in certain respects, I'm definitely on-grid when it comes to internet and Wi-Fi, so I've been editing a video most of this morning, and then a little sleep. But what I've noticed is how completely compatible with a peaceful life this little experiment is. When you are in a confined space of a, an eight foot by three foot shepherd hut, basically barely enough room for a shepherd, um, you I notice you have to pay attention to every little space and so when I was barbecuing last night and I'd got my things out on, on there's very little worktop space in and so of course I had to bring everything outside on this table that I'm sitting at now and you simply adapt of course um, we all adapt to the circumstances but I found it completely beguiling in a way, um, uh, stripped down to the basics once more. And when there's less space and less stuff and less options, unsurprisingly, life becomes more simple. And you tend to appreciate very simple things like a bunch of flowers which greeted me when I arrived here yesterday afternoon, and a candle for the dark right round the table at the barbecue. And so, um, the other things that I notice is that there are, there are sounds that I'm not used to. I'm used to the sounds of the chickens, but there are some other creatures here. I don't even know what they are. Called. I think there may be turkeys um, squawking around and then this morning over my first cup of tea there was a sort of and uh, I think it was a woodpecker in the trees opposite. Speaking of the trees um, I am going to give you uh, just a quick look at this giant of a tree right next to the Right next to the uh, log cabin, look at this. Now that's what you call a tree. Um, I believe it's a cross between a sequoia and a Douglas fir, something like that. And the girth round the base must be 30 or 40 feet round. Goodness me, that's a tree. And over there, you might just be able to see I hope, uh, the duck pond, which was part of this estate, which is being refurbished now. And uh, if I point in that direction, <laughs> you can see the HP sauce bottle, uh, which is my stand today. Uh, there's a 
a teepee in the next field. But in the distance, um, well, starting right by the church, which is next door to us, is Offa's Dyke, an, a an ancient uh, road. And uh, two miles down Offa's Dyke is um, a, a castle, one of, one of the, I think, the Welsh Marches castles, of which there are many around here. That one's called White Castle, which I visited when I was a lad with my dad's school camp. Where we went canoeing, potholing, volleyballing, um, fabulous uh, fishing. Caught a two-pound chub. That was memorable. Um, Paul Whitehouse got more to me. Your heart out. I was ten at the time, and, and landed this rather splendid, beautiful chub, which of course put back in the river, the River Wye. And uh, also, we visited local castles, of which there are many splendid examples. Goodrich, um, Skenfrith, uh, Raglan, uh, which is uh, not so far away from here now, G giving, giving my location away now. And um, the whole immediate effect of being really in the middle of nowhere, um, is completely benign, it seems to me. <laughs> and it makes, uh, for it, to give you an example, um, I, I've, of course I wanted a bottle of wine and some uh, lamb cutlets for my barbecue last night. Well, the local shop is nine miles away, and it was closed at seven o'clock. So I had to go all the way to Monmouth, which was another seven miles. So it actually took me a 40 minute round trip to get my provisions for the barbecue. So it dawned on me that being the social animals that we are, adapting really very quickly to our changing surroundings, um, the modern lives that we live, that we take to be normal, um, is quite simply, um, if I call it a facade, it's real enough for all of us. Our, our go-to-work routines, our poet's day, um, looking forward to the weekend. I won't tell you what poet stands for, it's, it's a bit rude. I learned that at, at the engineering works where I cleaned toilets, it was my first job after uni. But we, we take the pattern of our life, and our mortgages, and our insurance, and our pensions, as, um, as if there is no choice. Well, of course, we're all exposed now to uh, find a new life in the country, find a new life in the sunshine, find a new life in a camper van, find a new life in a shepherd hut. So, we are all victims, or <laughs> beneficiaries of our own choice. And what I have learned just in this 24 hours is that I reckon I could live like this. It's simpler. I feel more relaxed, even though I've done my video editing work. And watched uh, uh, Radu Kanu. Uh, win her uh, place into the final of the of the US Open in New York and so again it comes down to a choice how do you want to live uh, and um, who are you going to allow to dictate how you choose to live. And one of the consequences, uh, the positive cons consequences I would suggest of the pandemic has been to uh, focus our attention on the fact that there are uh, alternative 
ways to live, whether they be voluntarily or voluntarily embraced or partially enforced by the government or health health professionals. So maybe this is a a turning point for all of us where we don't live under the circumstances. Uh, we live under our chosen circumstances. Enough for now. <laughs>